Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another Fallout 4 Mods Weekly, the show where we take a look at some of the really cool and interesting mods that have come out during the week for Fallout 4, and boy, is it a packed episode this week. We have a ton of new mods to check out, but first, I have a couple of shoutouts I'd like to get out of the way. First of all, I'd like to welcome my three newest Tier 3 patrons. That'll be John Moreland, Logan Rignated, and Micah Hahn. Thank you guys for your extended support over on Patreon. It means a whole lot to me. Additionally, I'd like to give a shout out to Wyatt. You know who you are. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the video. The first mod we have this week is a really cool one for immersion and realism, and that is known as Uneducated Reload by Bingle. You may remember the Uneducated Shooter mod that added QE leaning as well as proper meshes for crouching. Well, this is going to add another sort of a gameplay immersion mod that is in modern shooters, and that's going to be the ability to load an extra round into the chamber whenever you do a partial reload. So in the vanilla game without the uneducated reload mod, whenever you do a partial reload, so as we can see, we have a full magazine of 30 rounds and we shoot a couple bullets and we do a reload, it's going to put us back at 30 rounds, which is pretty standard for a video game. That's no big deal. But as we know, if you do a partial reload in real life, you'll actually end up with one extra round in the chamber. And that's where the uneducated reload mod comes in. Now with it installed, if we do a partial reload again, you'll see that we end up with a final magazine count of 31, which is really cool. You install this mod and it just works. Now I would recommend pairing this with something like the tactical reload mod so that you actually get the partial reload animations as pulling back the bolt every time would actually negate that extra round. So in order for maximum immersion and realism, you definitely wanna pair this with tactical reload. Now, there is still one more thing with this mod. The way that it applies the extra round to the magazine is actually applied to every single weapon. So anything that has a mag size greater than one is going to get that extra round on a partial reload. And this includes things like revolvers. So if we see we have a standard six shooter here, if we fire once and reload, we're going to end up with seven rounds in the cylinder, which is not actually possible. So there is actually a keyword that is included with this mod. Sadly, it is not applied to the vanilla weapons automatically, but if you want to go in and make a patch yourself, or if anybody else wants to make any public patches, you can apply this keyword to any weapon that shouldn't have the extra round. This would include things like the revolver, missile launcher, and other weapons like that. So that is pretty cool that that is included in the files. Altogether, this makes for a nice little immersive addition to the game. Adding more realism is always super fun, especially in a survival sandbox like Fallout. So if you want to pick this one up, I definitely recommend it. It's just another way to bring Fallout 4 up to speed with other modern shooters. Now, for our next mod, we actually have a new little armor mod that I've been wanting for a very, very long time. Honestly, since Fallout 4 first came out, this is going to be Wearable Super Mutant Armor Redux by Whiskey Tango Fox. Now, this is actually based on the original Wearable Super Mutant Armor mod by Borjoy Z, except this one's going to come with some new updates. To be honest, I didn't even know the original mod existed, but now that there is a Redux for it, I'm very, very happy to have found it. This is going to allow you to wear all of these Super Mutant Armors just like the original mod did, but the Redux is also going to come with some leveled list integration. So now, whenever you kill a Super Mutant, they're actually going to drop a wearable version of the armor they have equipped. So that's really, really cool. Now, whenever you kill a Super Mutant, you can wear their armor, and honestly, that's awesome. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't make sense to be able to just slap it on straight from the Super Mutant, as they are pretty much twice your size, but I think it's very reasonable to be able to take this thing over and modify it at an armor workbench and scale it down to yourself and these armors look really really cool and to be honest while they are made for super mutants i think they have a really nice raider aesthetic as well so if you were playing as a raider or mercenary type character some of these armors might fit pretty well they have a nice scrappy aesthetic i've always liked them they're one of my favorite vanilla armor pieces and now being able to wear them on your character is really really cool the last change added in this redux too is that this mod is now an esl instead of an esp so it doesn't even count towards your load order limit so that's awesome if you want some new, cool, wearable Super Mutant Armors, I highly recommend picking this one up. It's a nice little lore-friendly addition to the game. Up next, we're checking out a new little attachment pack known as the PKM Zenit Co. add-on by SpongeBob Slavic Pants. You may remember the PKM Machine Gun mod by Nova that came out not too long ago. This mod is going to add even more attachments to that mod to add all kinds of cool new tactical options. 
I really, really like the PKM mod and all of the customization that it brought, but what's wrong with even more customization options? This is going to add a bunch of new stocks, sights, barrels, scopes, suppressors, everything you could possibly want for a PKM or really any gun. And having more variety is just cool. So let's go ahead and run through everything that's added with this mod. All right, so doing my best to remember the attachments from the base version of this mod. The add-on does not add any new receivers or barrels. However, I do believe it adds one new magazine in the form of the 75 round box, which is made of fabric and allows the weapon to be lighter, but of course allows you to carry less ammo. Then for the scopes, we do have the addition of some Zenitco rails, the black and flat dark earth options, which will allow you to put scopes up a bit higher. We have a couple of new muzzle brakes, the AEK999 muzzle brake, which is a huge muzzle brake for this thing. The no-name muzzle brake, which is just going to be a muzzle brake that they don't know the manufacturer of, a Pechenegg style muzzle brake, the Pechenegg SP muzzle brake, and then some suppressors at the end here. We have the oil filter, the 6P9, the common machine suppressor, the makeshift suppressor, the Hera Arms compensating suppressor, and the Salvo 12, which, I think was actually in the base version of this mod, weirdly enough. Then for ammo, I believe everything is the same. Carry handle, I do think we have some new options. The option to remove the carry handle, the AEK999 carry handle, the Pechenegg SP, and then the standard wooden that comes with the base mod. We have the handguard section. We do have some new stuff here. We have the AEK999 handguard, the Pechenegg style carry handle, the USMC M60 front grip is actually from the base game. The Zenitco B50 and available in Flat Dark Earth are from the add-on mod. And then the rest of these are in the base version of the mod as well. For the reticles, that's all the same, but for the grips, we should have some new stuff here. We have the regular old Bakelite grip that comes in the base mod, but then we have the Pechneg pistol grip, the plastic pistol grip, the Zenitco in black or Flat Dark Earth, and the Fab Defense pistol grip. Then, of course, we do have stock options. In the base one, we have removed and the fixed wooden stock and the skeletal stock. I believe all of these are in the base version of the mod, but if we get down lower here, we have the fixed plastic stock from the add-on, the Pechenegg SP stock, the Zenitco in black and flat dark earth. And then for the bipod, I believe these are all actually in the base game, so that is fine. And then for skins, those are all normal as well. So that's all of the new attachments in the Zenitco add-on mod. It's nothing too crazy, but having the ability to throw on even more attachments on one of your favorite weapon mods is really, really cool. So definitely pick this one up if you're a fan of the PKM and want even more ways to customize this thing. Now, the next mod that we're checking out is going to be the only standalone weapon in this video, and that's the Modern Warfare Minigun by Alfaka. This is going to add a new, much sleeker minigun compared to the vanilla Fallout 4 minigun, which is absolutely massive. This is, of course, based on real-life miniguns that you might find mounted on, say, Humvees or helicopters, something that you typically wouldn't carry in your own hands, but it's definitely much more believable that you could carry this thing than the Fallout 4 minigun. I definitely don't see how that can be carried by a standard human who isn't in power armor or a super mutant. But this new minigun does have a nice sleek profile that maybe, just maybe, somebody could hold up and fire on the move. Regardless of all of that, it is a very cool new weapon. It doesn't have a ton in the way of customization, nor does it have leveled list integration, but it is a fun new minigun. And with a little bit of Fallout 4 edit or CK work, this could be a cool minigun replacer for the vanilla Fallout 4 minigun. But as of right now, you just gotta pick up the only version of this that exists over at Egret Tours Marina. By far the most interesting part of this mod to me is the animations. This thing has a full set of custom animations for holding and firing the weapon, though as far as I can tell it has no custom reload because it never actually has to reload. It has an infinite magazine, so that's pretty interesting. Regardless, hold on to your ears because this is about to get loud. This thing definitely has some very interesting animations and some really cool sounds, though they are a tad bit loud like a minigun should be. As far as stats are concerned, this is definitely going to outperform the vanilla Fallout 4 minigun as it does 30 damage per shot and it uses 308 bullets instead of the 5mm in the base game. 
by far my favorite way to use this thing is to use it in third person. It makes for a nice, fun, heavy weapon to use, and honestly, it's just a little hard to aim in first person. This weapon does actually come with some damage upgrades, unlike the standard vanilla minigun, so this does prove to be a pretty efficient late game weapon. So if you're into heavy weapons and you like the new style of this minigun, it's definitely worth picking up and a good spot for a nice modern load order. For our next mod, we've got something pretty simple, and that is the Radium Rifle Reload Animation by Cadaver. This is going to swap out the Vanilla Radium Rifle Reload Animation with something a bit nicer. So I'm just going to go ahead and let you see the before and after so you can compare the two. Yeah, pretty simple. It just replaces the original reload with a new one. So if you do prefer the newly added animation, be sure to pick this one up using the link down in the description below. Alrighty, the next mob we're checking out is one that I'm very excited for, and that is the Thermal Vision Framework by BongoMong24. And the way that this works is that every sniper scope that uses a scope overlay now has the ability to throw on a thermal scope. On a whim, it's really cool, and it's just by the use of a hotkey, and then you can turn it off. The overlay will last just for a second on the enemies, and then it goes away. But that's not all it comes with. We also get an infrared version, which looks super, super cool. And then we can turn that off as well. And then finally, we can even throw on night vision with the press of a hotkey. You don't need to craft an entirely new scope just to use it. And then you can turn it off whenever it's daytime. Super, super cool functionality. And the way that it all works is really, really simple. You just download the mod and it works with any scope. You see that I'm using a modded weapon here and it just works, which is awesome. So the way that you turn it on is you go into your MCM after you download it, find the newly added menu known as TM Vision. And from there, you can set up your hotkeys and you'll see that we have the thermal scope, the infrared and the night vision. But what's really cool is that we also have hotkeys for just a standard version of these visions without using a scope. And so what that's going to look like is now whenever you press the hotkey, instead of using your scope, you're instead just going to throw it onto your regular screen overlay. So as we can see, here is the thermal vision. It's like we're just using thermal goggles, so pretty cool. And then we also have the infrared goggles. And then, of course, we can throw on some night vision goggles. And it all just works. It's so, so cool. I gotta say, I really, really like this mod. It adds a ton of cool new ways to fight enemies in night and still have some high visibility. You can throw this into a lore-friendly load order, a modern tactical load order, and it's just gonna work. It all just makes sense, and it's something that should have been in the game in the first place. I hate the idea of needing to switch to a night vision scope rather than just pressing a key and throwing it into night vision. Having to go back to a weapons workbench or having to use night vision during the daytime just because there isn't a workbench around is really a pain, so having this is super cool. Up next, we're going to be taking a look at a new dungeon and quest mod known as CSET Presents Homesick by Pig. We actually did a full playthrough of this yesterday, so if you want to check that out, you can do so. It'll be over on the channel. But for those of you who just wanted a brief little rundown, this is going to be a newly added Robco dungeon that has some cool little horror elements to it. Perfect for Halloween, which is coming up very, very soon. The whole idea of this quest is that you're in a Robco facility that was taking mentally ill patients and throwing their brains into robo-brains so they can continue study on them. Those robo-brains are still alive down there and you're going to have to talk to them in order to find your way through the first part of the dungeon. After that, the area takes a huge horror twist. There's lots of goofy stuff going on like disappearing and reappearing mannequins, little jump scares here and there, and some really fun, spooky atmosphere. There's even custom ambient sounds in this mod to really help amplify that spookiness. On top of that, there's some really high quality voice acting and new characters, including a return of a classic character from New Vegas, which is really, really nice. And the voice acting on that is top notch. And I'm even in this mod. If you want to track down some hollow tapes, you can hear my voice acting, terrible as it may be, in the presence of some pre-war hollow tapes. That was a lot of fun to record, and it's really cool to see this mod actually out. So if you want to check that out, it's a really cool little lore-friendly dungeon. It seems pretty easy at first, but there is a pretty hard combat segment as well. Altogether, it's a lot of fun and a really, really cool addition to the Fallout universe. If you're just looking for more content for your game, this is definitely one I'd recommend picking up. And it's really small, definitely worth throwing into just about any load order. 
And finally, the mod you've all been waiting for, the reason the video is titled the way that it is, we're looking at what might just be the best mod that has ever existed for Fallout 4, and that is the Todd Howard Cutout by D. Polari. This is going to allow you to place a cardboard cutout of Todd Howard, the Lord and Savior of Fallout, into your Fallout settlements. So you can just head over to your settlement and craft this thing, and you'll be able to see Todd Howard every time you wake up, anytime you go to the market, wherever you want to place him. You could even fill your settlement full of Todd Howards and have him populate the entire town. And if that wasn't cool enough, there's actually two versions of the Todd Howard cutout. There's the regular cutout, and then there's a cutout with the little speech bubble that says, of course, it just works works. This is by far the pinnacle of Fallout 4 modding, and I gotta say, I think we've peaked. This is it. This is the best we're gonna get, and it's all downhill from here. All jokes aside, this is actually a really, really fun addition to your settlements if you don't care about lore friendly, or if you do, who cares? He actually does appear in the game a couple times. Throw this at your settlement. It's funny, it's cool, it's goofy, and it looks great. I really like the design of this. Deepolari did an excellent job, and it's just awesome. I'm sad to say that we did miss Fallout Day. I didn't make an announcement for Fallout Day, but go ahead and download this as a celebration of that. It's really, really cool, and again, just super goofy. But with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Lots of cool mods in this video today, so I hope you found at least one to add to your load order as a new permanent addition. Let me know down in the comments if you did. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating. Consider subscribing if you haven't already for more videos just like this. Big shout out to all of my patrons for supporting every single video and the mods I work on. And of course, a very, very special thank you to Captain Chaos, Helljumper, Indecisive Wolf, Jackie Noy, Timmy76, John Moreland, Cushy, Logan Rigmaiden, Mikerhan, Moonlit Gamer, Feed, and Youth RC for joining that tier 3 Patreon membership. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, you can do so using the link down in the description below, but it is completely optional. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.